They've got this duct tape here. I'm usually a walker, a rounder, but they've got a duct tape. So apparently they want me to stand still. Um, I got a phone call from John at uh, Keep Northern Illinois Beautiful about two months ago. And he says, we would like for you to join us for the uh, fundraising lunches and breakfasts that are coming up and talk about the human side of trash. Human side of trash, are you kidding me? I thought I'd done some challenges, but I, where do I start? Well, after thinking about it for a while, um, it, it sort of came to the surface very, very quickly. Um, I've got three stories for you that sort of get us away from the statistics and the things that are accomplished on the grid. Um, now keep in mind, um, I, I, my opinion is that Keep Northern Illinois Beautiful is not necessarily in the business of recycling or picking up trash or education about that. It is behavior modification. If we can get somebody to change their behavior and either recycle or not do this or do this and do it on a regular basis and then become an ambassador and pass that on to other people and get them into the habit, that's where we accomplish big, big things. So with that behavior modification, you also realize sometimes it can be a big hill that you're battling. When you talk about taking a full nation and changing their behavior modification, like reduction in smokers, um, it could also be the, uh, the, the wearing of safety belts. Sometimes that can take 40 to 50 years to move an entire country where you want them to be statistics-wise uh, for smoking or seatbelt safety. Well, we see that now the behavior modification and the big push is for caring for the earth. So let me start with my first story. About nine years ago, we started the cleanup in, in Love's Park with my Rotary Club. We started with 17 volunteers, we picked up 33 bags of garbage, it was in three hours, we had lunch at McDonald's, and we called it a day. Well, after a couple of years, and it sort of gained momentum, we got more and more volunteers. Well, now that pattern is countywide. We're up to about 1,300 volunteers picking up tons of garbage influencing a lot of the youngsters with embedding them with this is the right thing to do on a pretty consistent basis. And that's what we were trying to do at the Love's Park Rotary too. It's not just picking up trash, although that's great, it's instant gratification and everybody's happy, but also can we get these people to do it over and over and over again? And we get graduates from the Harlem uh, High School that started with us nine years ago, and they're well into college and possibly out, and they still come back. So it's nice to see those familiar faces. Well, the night before we did this one year, we went up to the Brewers game. My son was probably about eight years old at the time. About halfway through the game, he got sick. And he continued to get sick through about three more home runs, all the way home, and throughout the night. And I mean, he was yelling sick, if you know what I mean. So when I got up in the morning, and it was time to meet everybody down at Loves Park City Hall, it was clearly that we needed to be able to leave him sleep and recover from his activities in the night. So I came home about 2.30, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and he says, Dad, where have you been? And I told him. I said, remember how we do the cleanup every time? Yeah, yeah, that's where I was, and we did so many bags of garbage, and there were so many people, and it was great. He cried. He cried hard. It was like... It was like I cut off his hand. It's like, are you kidding me? Here's an eight-year-old kid that is disappointed that he can't go pick up garbage. But what we did at the very early on is it wasn't about picking up garbage. It was what can you find. And sometimes we found $20 bills, and sometimes we found things we could not describe or even identify. And that made it fun for an eight-year-old boy. My other story was about my wife. I always pick up trash. If I'm pumping gas, I've got the time. I don't know how much time it takes to fill a tank, but there's enough time to pick up what's around. And there's a convenient garbage can there, too. So I pick up garbage. If I'm going into Target, I pick up something and I go in. Well, Disney did a survey and research when he opened up his parks, because he wanted the parks to be extremely clean, how long will people hang on to something before they're tired of carrying it if there's not a handy garbage can and they throw it on the ground? The research that he did was 27 feet. They will hang on to it for 27 feet. After that, they dump it. Okay? So, all that being said, my wife, love her to death, you don't know what you're going to catch. 
Do you know where that's been? <laughs> right? Well, I constantly tell her I get instant gratification from being able to get it picked up and in the can, and it literally takes me two seconds, and it's on my way, and it's not a big deal. We're down halfway through Illinois. We stop at a truck stop. I'm pumping the gas. She goes in with, with Eric to the bathroom. And she's probably from me to that wall. And I'm just watching her pick up a piece of trash. I'm like, she's got it. I was thrilled like, when she finally got it. So after I pumped the gas and I went in to pay, she goes, I found $74. <laughs> If she hadn't told me that, I would have had such good feeling about what she possibly had picked up on a, on a habit. So here's the deal. When people pick up $74, they see instant gratification. They see instant value. And what I explained to her was, I see the same thing. If it's a Dixie cup or if it's a Snickers wrapper, it doesn't matter. It's still instant gratification. A different kind of instant gratification, but nevertheless the same. And after she said, we're going to donate this to the Boy Scout troop, good for you. Do you know where that's been? <laughs> I was waiting, I don't know how long to say that. And it finally paid off. The third story I have for you on this human side of trash was something that if I could lay it out, anticipate it, think that it could possibly happen, I would have never guessed it. It was a very nice day. Um, I was going down Forest Hills. Had my dog with me, and going by the Forest Hills Country Club. As you know, right along that chain link fence, along the golf course, it's a pretty good spread. It looked like somebody had opened up a filing cabinet and shook it and the wind blew everything into that chain link fence the entire length, from the time that you start the property to the time that you have the entrance of the uh, country club. So we kept driving, we went on up, we got Chinese food, we came back, sat in the parking lot at the country club and ate my Chinese food. Well, I needed to walk the dog, so I grabbed a bag and off we went down the side. Now I realized that the trash that was here after we went about 10 or 12 feet, was probably pretty fresh because it was not wet and then dry again, you know, like if it was the overnight dew. It was relatively brand new tossed there. Then as I looked and I was picking it up, there were graphs and there were reservations and there were expense charts and there were just all kinds of very, very heavy planning. It wasn't random. No candy wrappers or anything like that. So we kept going, and I'm tossing it in my bag, and I picked up literally a grocery sack full of documents. And when we got down to the end, um, I found a sort of a satchel, a zipper satchel that was unzipped, and obviously that's where it all came from. So we tossed it all in, went home, didn't really think that much about it, and as I was cleaning out my car, I realized, you know what, this is, a, this is an opportunity for a possible teachable moment for my son. We pick this stuff up, now what do we do with it? Because it looks as though it's got some value from somebody about something, but literally we could not make heads or tails of it. So we started digging through it, looking for phone numbers. We called nine numbers, nothing. No return phone calls, no answers, no nothing. Number 10, the lady picked up the phone and she was probably in her 70s. And I described her, you don't know me, this is what happened, blah, 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 we've got this, do you know anything about it? And she said, my husband is going to kiss you full on the face. <laughs> and I was thinking, that's not incentive. But I went, I went forward anyway. So he got on the horn, and I said, this is what I've got. And he said, um, yeah, I, I am really, really happy you found this. It happened to be that it is the parents of Boy Scouts that are well aged out of Boy Scouts. They liked each other, they kept together. They've been doing Canadian trips for 14 years. This was not only their history, but it was also the reservations for the trip they were taking to Canada the next month. So, Mr. Planner Boy would have had his little uh, derriere on the grill if uh, he would have lost all this stuff. 
So I said, well, come on down, pick it up at my office, and, you know, it's all intact, and, you know, obviously he left it on the top of his car just that afternoon, so it's not damaged. So he said before he hung up, he said, I gotta tell you, nobody does this. That's the payoff. That's the payoff. He couldn't do anything. If he offered me a reward, that would not have been better than nobody does this. And that sort of makes you feel good and a little bit of the um, uniqueness of it all, too. Sort of by mistake. I'll leave you with this. I was at a uh, Rotary conference uh, in 2005 in Chicago for the 100th anniversary of Rotary. And there were 42,000 people there all over the, all over the world. Um, language barriers like you could not imagine. They had a lot of people come in from all over the country as guest speakers. This particular person was a staffer at the White House. And he talked on a topic, and as he got toward the end of his talk, he said, you know, i got to tell you, my grandmother sort of bundled it all up for me in one sentence. It is a sentence that contains ten words. Each word has two letters. Each word has a vowel and a consonant. So we're all going, are you kidding me? I'm not really sure that a sentence like that could even exist. Ten words, two letters per word. So, of course, you know, mumble, jumble, mumble, jumble, 42,000 people. Nobody can figure it out, obviously. And so they had this big banner across the back, and they put it up one word at a time. And it sums it up very, very easily. If it is to be, it is up to me. Thank you.